articulate. It's really incredible to be serving with someone like Paulette and to actually have served with uh, or Shirley now. I lost her. But yeah. There's a number of seats up here too. There's three here in the front row. Uh, my name is Representative Matt Erpelding. I, I actually got into politics by accident and uh, the paper actually said I was the accidental leader. So it's like this thing just kind of keeps uh, tumbling along. Um, I had a particularly, I think, great life. I taught at the College of Western Idaho. I trained teachers at the College of Western Idaho in the spring and the fall. And then I guided, uh, it was a high altitude climbing guide, and now I own a guide service. Um, and so in the summertime, I left and went to Alaska and climbed big mountains and came back and then taught again. And so I had a very balanced, great life. And uh, then this guy, Tom Luna, came along. <laughs> Yeah, I hate to remind you of what the past is like, but this guy, Tom Luna, comes along and directly impacts these students that I'm teaching at CWI. So I'm training teachers and directly impacts their futures with the Students Come First, also known as the Luna Laws. And I went from a educator at CWI to a 37-year-old intern with Brian Cronin and Shelly, and, or uh, Shirley, Shelly's her daughter, um, and from there, I ended up getting elected. So now I've been in the legislature. This is my third term. Um, I've been in leadership for a majority of that time, but now I'm serving as the House leader. I want to add a couple things to what Paulette has said. When we're in the in, when we're in the role of legislators, we serve everyone. So it's really important, and I think that uh, I want to drive that home. That if there's anybody here that considers themselves an independent or a Republican. We're going to do everything we can to help all parties, all people in the state of Idaho. And so when Paulette and I started to really pitch this rural teachers, this loan forgiveness program, my colleagues on the other side automatically said, that's a great idea. How are you going to pay for it? And I thought, well, here's the thing. In 1999, you guys took out a $199 million loan on a prison. And we still have $35 million on that loan, and we pay $5 million a year out of the general fund for a prison loan. We currently have a revenue surplus, so I have an idea. Let's get our house in order. Let's pay off that loan, because the last thing we want to do is continue to invest interest in a prison, and let's reinvest that $5 million in a teacher loan forgiveness program. become a co-sponsor on that bill right now and her phone started ringing off the hook all these folks that are like you know what it's so hard for us it's whether it doesn't matter if you're living close to the Washington border or the Oregon border or the Montana border or the Wyoming border our teachers in Idaho make less than any of those states at a starting wage that is not fair teachers need to be able to have a living wage and something that they can invest their life in regardless of what community they're in and rural communities right now in Idaho are outmatched by places like Boise and the West Ada because they have more property tax because there's simply more people and they can pay their people more money. And what we need to do if we're going to stay true to our state constitution is invest in all of the school districts across the state 100%. And I think we've got a pretty good solution for that. Yeah. To build on what Paulette said about this idea of uh, decriminalization of marijuana, I know that that can be a, a touchy issue, but we actually have a real problem in Idaho, and that is pretty much every other state around us has made it fully legal. So if one of our college kids makes a mistake, goes across the border, and then gets pulled over in Idaho, they run the risk of going to jail for this and losing their student loans for this. Now, the discussion of whether or not to legalize it is left for another day, but at a minimum, we shouldn't be treating this as almost a felony behavior. We should be treating it as an infraction just like we would minors in possession so that we can protect people who are going to college and need financial aid in order to be there. And this is a real concern. 77% of our borders are now surrounded by states and actually a country that has pretty much made it legal. So we're working on that. I think Paulette's on the right track. Uh, Representative Jordan, as I like to say. 
She's on the right track with that because we've got LCSC, which is right there by Clarkson. We've got Moscow Pullman connection. Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about that? I say Boise too, and I live there. So, uh, and my last name is Erpelding. Get it right? I'll get this. Okay. So, <clears throat> as an Erpel Ding Dong, the witch is gone. Um, but we also have NIC, which is dealing with the same same challenge with Spokane, and uh, we have CSI, which while it's a more conservative area of the state, Nevada is now legal. So we have a challenge we need to address, and I think Paulette's doing it in a nonpartisan way, a responsible way to begin to have the discussion of actually how are we going to treat our drug policy in Idaho, and are we going to just throw people in prison and then take general fund money to pay our debts off with it, which I think is wrong. We also are co-sponsoring another piece of legislation that is a student loan refinance piece. So, as you all know, a majority of Idahoans that go to college end up with around twenty-six to thirty thousand dollars in student loan debt, and that creates a chain reaction in our community. The generation before me, I'm leading X, so I'm a Generation X kind of leading edge Generation X um, person. The generation before me generally bought their first home sometime between the ages of 25 and 30. That has now shifted to where folks in the millennials and in the trailing edge of Generation X are buying homes at 34 to 40. So what that means is they're not getting that first capital investment in a piece of property that helps appreciate their value, that helps set them up for a future for 10 years longer. The single greatest uh, hindrance to that is having significant student loans and trying to dig yourself out of that after college. So what we're looking at is finding a way to provide Idahoans a refinancing opportunity that refinances their loans at a half a point lower than what you can get at the federal level. Now what that means is you're going to pay less in interest, which is a good thing. The state is going to make that money on that interest, which can then be reintroduced as scholarships. So we can start lowering student debt on the front end in the first place. And this can all be done as an arm of the Idaho Housing Authority. So all of the infrastructure is in place to make this happen. I, it sounds wonky. You all are like, you're like, you're like way in the reeds. It's okay. But here's the thing. If we're going to actually solve problems, we've got to put ideas out there that potentially solve these problems. And student, how many people here are U of I students? Yeah. How many of you carry debt? Yeah. So, uh, no offense, I'm an Idaho State University grad, so... Uh, no, in seriousness, I do have a U of I degree too, so, but I did it at the Boise campus. Um, but I still have $7,000 in debt from a college career that ended in 1997. Whoa. And, yeah, I did it on my own. And that was hard, and, I, and I'm proud of myself for it, but I think the next generation should have a little bit of a more easy shot at repaying it, because the loans that I had at that time were 6%, so I had very high interest rate loans. Now they're around 2.5%. Just imagine if you could pay a 1.9% to Idaho instead of to the federal government and help improve our higher education system. That's a pretty awesome model. more to talk about, uh, but um, I think we'd love to take questions, and taking questions might be, it's going to be hard for us to really move around the room with the microphone, so if you're interested in asking a question, maybe we could, uh, do we have a second microphone? We can just yell. Yeah, that's what I think, is we'll take, we'll point at somebody and you can yell it, because I also don't think we have index cards um, to, to have people write down questions.